You know, the NFC South is one of those divisions where everybody's pretty bunched up because nobody's really very good. <laughs> the best in that division, it was the case last year, is just barely average and certainly feels like it could be the same thing again this year. But that creates a unique opportunity for each of the teams in the division. Yes, even the Panthers. Like, if you get some good breaks and things go your way, and you put together maybe one stretch where you play pretty decent football, you got a chance to win the division and get a home playoff game. So all hope doesn't need to be lost. So this certainly feels like another season where you maybe get one team uh, in the playoffs from the NFC South. So let's talk about this division and see who might come out on top. I'll start with the New Orleans Saints and... You know, this is one of these teams that a few years ago when you had Sean Payton there and you had Drew Brees there, they were one of the more notable franchises in the NFL, and now you just kind of look at them and they're like, oh, they're the Saints again. The, the real Saints. The Saints that you've known for so many years. Not particularly great and just largely irrelevant. And that's what they are. And even when you look at their offseason, like they signed Chase Young, sure, to a one-year deal. They brought in Willie Gay, but they... You know, after so many years of being up against the salary cap, it really hamstrings and restricts them in terms of the improvements they can make to their football team. Um, they did have Cameron Jordan come back for his 14th season. Maybe, who knows? He's getting up there in age. Could be his final season in what should be a Hall of Fame career. And it's one of those things, like, later later on in his career, it feels like he started to get some of the attention he deserved, um, getting the media spotlight, getting endorsements and commercials and so forth, and good for him. He, Like I said, he deserves it. He's one of those guys, when you look at him, you say, man, he was in the draft class with J.J. Watt and Von Miller and all those guys, and Cameron Jordan's still doing his thing. Uh, the Saints last year, they were solid on offense, but they weren't great. Similar story on defense, right? Solid, but they weren't spectacular, and they weren't great enough to carry them to the playoffs. And I guess I just look at this team and I say, where's the real reason for optimism or excitement? What exactly is the ceiling for this team with Derek Carr at the helm? Now, I'm not just trying to put it on Derek Carr, because you just look at the roster, like, yeah, you've got Olave, okay, great. Kamara is back for another year, fine. They've invested a ton in the offensive line over the years in draft pick capital and so forth, but you, know, you just, it's kind of a blah team, you know, blah division, frankly. I think the Saints, you know, are poised, I guess I'd say, to bring up the rear in this division, but, you know, a couple of good breaks, they could be just as likely to win the division. But I think they win six games this year. Which means I have the Carolina Panthers not finishing last in this division. How about that? You know, they kept pounding in 2023 all the way to the top pick. Thanks, Carolina. Much appreciated. Woo! One of the worst trades in North American sports history. And it's Still not done yet, technically, because the Bears have their second-round pick in 2025's draft. Um, they've got a long way to go um, after a couple of really disastrous years. But I did like the hiring of Dave Canellis for them. I think he can be good for them, especially and most importantly of all, <laughs> you don't have a choice. Like, you got to make this Bryce Young thing work. And the work Canellis put in with Baker Mayfield last year, Geno Smith before that, and you look at Canellis and you say, there's a little bit of a quarterback whisper in there, potentially. A good offensive mind, and yeah, that's the type of guy I might want working with my young quarterback, especially in year two when things didn't go very well in year one. Um, this team was certainly aggressive in the offseason, and that's probably because of a combination of years of poor drafting combined with um, the fact that they didn't have many draft picks. They don't have their first-round pick, right? So they had to go spend big. They put in quite a bit of money on defense. Jadavian Clowney, Josie Jewell, Ashawn Robinson, Dane Jackson, DJ Wanham. And then you look at the offensive side of the ball. This is the big thing here. They spent huge at the guard position with Robert Hunt and Damian Lewis. And you're like, man, that's a lot of money. But you know what? You have to spend that money. That's the talent that was available. You needed help all over the place to support your young quarterback, Bryce Young, and not put him in that dog shit situation he was in last year. You can justify those expenses 100 out of 100 times. Drafted a couple of guys on the offensive side of the ball, too, and Xavier Leggett and Jatavian Sanders. Hopefully those two guys for Carolina could come in and contribute. Uh, they traded for Deontay Johnson, so you've got him and Adam Thielen. Maybe Jonathan Mingo takes a step forward in 2024. 
They, they've gotten better on the offensive side of the ball, and they really needed to. And most importantly for the Panthers, Panthers fans, they got to hope for a big leap from Bryce Young in year two. He is in a better situation, so it puts him in a better spot, but he's got to be better than he was last year. And if he's not, things are going to be bad in Carolina for a while. They really got to hope that this kid can piece it together and that he can work with Dave Canellis and Canellis can help unleash him. Um, I think the Panthers are going to be improved this year. Like I said, I like the Canellis hire. You know, if I was feeling bolder or froggier, I'd pick them to win the division because you have worst to first stories in the NFL almost every single year, right? And again, when you look at this division, it doesn't feel like anybody's so good that they're going to run away with it and nobody's so good that they're going to win 11, 12 games. Yeah, like crazier shit has happened. I'm not ready to go all the way there. Uh, I'll say Carolina can win seven games. I, I certainly could see that as a possibility. Um, I don't think they're going to be as easy of an out or an easy of a win as they were last year. Uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were a bit of a surprise last season. You know, post Tom Brady, what are they going to do? Here comes Baker Mayfield, and they win nine games, win the division. Then they go and win a game in the wild card round. And it certainly seems like Baker Mayfield has found his home. Bucks seem to agree. They gave him a three-year contract. Um, kind of big on the money, but it wasn't nearly as huge as some of the other quarterback deals you've seen given out over the past few months. But you know, based off of his 4,000 yards passing last year, the team winning the division, it's understandable why they said, yeah, we're going to bring him back for another year. They've also got Mike Evans back. They brought him on a big two-year contract, and that's great. You know, he's back to add to his Hall of Fame resume. You think about it, he started his career with 10 straight seasons of 1,000-plus yards receiving, and then he's this close to having 100 career receiving touchdowns. Like, he's never a guy you look at and you say, like, he's a top two, three, or even five wide receiver in the league, but you know he's pretty damn good. He's almost like Frank Gorish in a way, but at the wide receiver position. But he's the first guy in NFL history with 10 straight 1,000-yard seasons, or excuse me, 10 straight 1,000-yard seasons to start his career. You look at those numbers, he plays a few more years. Yeah, he might not be first ballot caliber type of guy, but you can't deny him Canton. You just can't. Um, offensively, the one thing I'll call out is they've got to get better and more consistent running the football because Baker isn't that type of quarterback that you can look at him and have him throw for 46, 4,800 yards and expect to win a ton of games. He's just not that type of guy. Even the 4,000-yard piece is kind of pushing it a little bit, right? So they got to find a way to get a little bit more out of that running game. On the defensive side of the ball, you've got Levante David back for year 13 of his career, and a career that, to me, is one of the more underrated ones in my lifetime. Levante David is a stud. And you say, well, this is a guy that's made the Pro Bowl one time, and everybody makes the Pro Bowl. Problem is, is that he plays in an off the ball linebacker position at a time where you know so many teams run three fours and you've got you've got linebackers that are edge rushers and those guys tend to hog up those uh, pro bowl slots because of their sack numbers but those that know ball that watch games that study film they know levante david is a fucking stud and it's a shame he hasn't gotten more buzz in his career it's one of those ones that if he had his level of play is hall of fame worthy i'll put it like that the accolades he received certainly are not, um, but that's not really his fault. It sucks he didn't get the attention that he deserved because he, he's just a stud. So hope Buccaneers fans enjoy you know, Mike Evans and um, Levante David while they still got him. When you look at that defense, they've got to get stingier against the pass to avoid having to win shootouts. There's no Shaq Barrett in hell. He even retired. And what that means is they really need big years out of Kalijah Kansi and Yaya Diaby. They need those guys to provide some more pass rush, and then you got Tyron Shronka. Um, those guys are going to have to step up and get to the quarterback. And if they do, this team could certainly win the division. I think they'll be in the mix, but I think they might fall just a little bit short and maybe win eight games this year. So I'm getting really crazy and stupid here. I'm picking the Atlanta Falcons to win the NFC South, and I don't know why. Raheem Morris gets another crack as an NFL head coach. In the offseason, the big splash they made was signing Kirk Cousins to a massive deal. And then, for some fucking reason, after giving Kirk Cousins all of that money, coming off of a torn Achilles, mind you, they draft Michael Penix Jr. with the eighth overall pick. Like, it's just fucking dumb. It's still, when you look at it, astounding to me that they're like, whoa, we're following the Green Bay model. 
You clearly didn't study the fucking model because you're not following the Green Bay model. The Green Bay model is draft a young quarterback in the 20s and have him sit three years behind a future first ballot Hall of Fame quarterback. That's the Brett Favre to Aaron Rodgers, the Aaron Rodgers to the Jordan Love. You talk about Kirk Cousins here, good NFL starting quarterback, never sniffing Canton. And you drafted Michael Penix Jr., eighth overall, for him to potentially sit on the bench for the first two or three years of his career when he was already an older prospect. Again, I just can't get over how stupid this was. Just unbelievable. Now, good thing is, whether it's Cousins or if it's Penix at some point in time, you still got a worthy skill core with B. John Robinson coming into year two, Drake London, Kyle Pitts. It's a team that's invested quite a bit in those skill players. But they, what they really need now is for all three of those skill guys to have monster seasons. And if Cousins is a guy and Cousins is back and healthy, they'll be in a spot where they can get that out of them. Um, defensively, they added Justin Simmons. Um, in the preseason, they made the big trade for Matthew Judon. So they certainly got themselves a legit safety to help that secondary. They got themselves a legit pass rusher that they needed on the edge. You know, in a division where you say, eh, it doesn't feel like there's a ton of separation here. What are some of the separating factors? You know, who's got the most star potential or star talent on their team? I think that's the Falcons. Who's got the best quarterback in the division? Again, the Falcons, if Kirk Cousins is healthy. I think that's got to give them the edge. So maybe they win nine games, win this division, get to host a playoff game. If I had to pick anybody right now, I'm picking them to take it.